I want to thank um, the organizers of this program for giving me two great opportunities. One is the opportunity to um, hear some of the, su the successful strategies that have been employed in engaging the business community in early childhood development. Um, I found George Kaiser's uh, talk very inspiring. Second, to spend some time with you describing where Minnesota is in that process. Um, we're at a different stage and maybe taking a little bit different path. Uh, so I've had to pare back a very complicated story, but, but let me take you through what we're doing in Minnesota. We've had the good fortune of having a state that appreciates education and a business community that for a long time has invested in it. One of those organizations <clears throat> is called the Itasca Project. It was organized a few years ago to try and identify ways to make Minnesota a great place to live and work. One of the five task forces they created was a task force on early childhood development. They picked the president of the University of Minnesota, Bob Brunix, to chair it. <clears throat> McKinsey and company uh, provided all of the staff work and they laid a terrific factual foundation for much of the work that um, we are building on. Their concluding recommendation was to support the approach and work of something called the Minnesota Early Learning Foundation. A second business community asset, <coughs> excuse me, is the Minnesota Business Partnership. Uh, this is an organization that represents large businesses in Minnesota before the state legislature. Uh, they have made education and workforce readiness a top priority in their work program since their founding in 1977. And they, too, in everything that they have been saying about the issue of early childhood development, have been recommending to the legislature that they follow the approach of the Minnesota Early Learning Foundation. A third and very important uh, community asset was a group of businessmen that organized several years back calling themselves the Minnesota School Readiness Business Advisory Council. Ms. Arbach, we called them. Um, we quickly recognized that this name had to change and it's now the Minnesota Businesses for Early Learning. But that group organized three task forces, a task force on recognition to give due credit to businesses that were doing good things in early childhood development for their employees, an awareness task force that recognized the need to get the research findings and the case for investing in early childhood out more broadly to uh, chambers of commerce and rotary clubs and, and other business organizations so the people had a better understanding of what was involved and why it was important. And third, a public policy task force that I had the good fortune to chair. Our assignment was to develop um, a policy strategy for engaging the state in supporting early childhood development. And our recommendation was to create the Minnesota Early Learning Foundation. So, what is the Minnesota Early Learning Foundation and what is it doing? First and perhaps most important, it is grounded in research findings and that's why the work of this group is so important to us because we recognize that people need to be persuaded by good facts and solid analysis if, if they're going to be committed to this uh, task. We also had the good fortune that Minnesota was piloting, the state of Minnesota was piloting um, early childhood assessments of the readiness for school of um, children entering kindergarten in the fall of um, their first year. What those assessments showed was that on five uh, domains, nearly half of Minnesota children on average were not ready for kindergarten. And if you came from a disadvantaged, um, at-risk background, you were up to eight times more likely not to be ready for school. And as one tracked that experience forward, while some of those kids caught up, most of them did not, and those gaps simply widened. So the, <clears throat> the policy group that I was working on in creating the Minnesota Early Learning Foundation, or what we call MELF, um, made two fundamental conclusions. The first is, while the case for quality early childhood development is compelling, how best to deliver it and to fund it in the state of Minnesota was neither clear nor yet compelling. Second, all of this analytical work was going on at a time when our state budget was in deficit 
And so we were particularly concerned that we identify cost-effective strategies for delivering quality early childhood development that could withstand the vicissitudes of um, fluctuating state budgets. So in late 2005, um, we created MELF as a um, 501c3 private foundation. Uh, initial funding came from three sources, my own company, Cargill, uh, the McKnight Foundation, and Twin, Twin Cities United Way combined to put $2.5 million of initial funding um, into the group. I was fortunate enough to be the organizing um, chair of the board, but uh, we realized that we needed to have senior leadership in the Twin Cities um, business community to drive this. And we're fortunate in being able to attract the CEOs of most of the major companies in the Twin Cities, as well as people like Art Roenick, who was a national spokesman on this issue, uh, Bob Brunix from the University of Minnesota, and, and other key community leaders. So we have a board now of 12 people who have real stature in the community. We defined our mission very, in a very simple and straightforward manner. Over a limited time period, three to five years in our mind, we are going to develop a cost-effective statewide strategy for school readiness, make that case um, to the governor and to the state legislature, and disband. And it was important in our minds for our credibility uh, in going to the business community and others to demonstrate that, that this was not we were not another agency, not another uh, permanent uh, fixture on the horizon. That we had a mission that we intended to be successful at, but that was time limited. We have four guiding principles, um, and these will be familiar, I think, to most of you. The first is prevention over rehabilitation. Our focus is on prenatal to preschool, zero to five, because um, that's where the development occurs, that's where the opportunities are greatest. Second, this has been somewhat controversial, to focus public resources on at-risk children. We've committed to this because we think it's an important part of cost effectiveness. It's the area of greatest need, obviously, but also the area of largest payback. Third, we want to involve, empower, and what we call in-skill parents. Uh, they are the first and the most important decision makers on behalf of their children as well as the first and most important teachers of those children. So they need to be equipped with the knowledge and understanding and, and skills to perform those roles in a responsible way. And oftentimes our institutions are not delivering that uh, knowledge um, and awareness uh, throughout the community. Finally, to set standards to measure outcomes, not inputs, and to publish the results. 